God is good. Wow. I've, uh, I've had a pretty blessed life to this point. I have an extremely patient, forgiving, and loving wife. Did I mention she's wonderful and beautiful? <laughs> I've been adopted by a wonderful son and daughter-in-law, and I get to brag about my two awesome grandsons. The good Lord even threw in another mom for me. And these are the things I get to thank God for every day. I've known God most of my life. I accepted Jesus as my Savior while I was in high school. But until I was older, I really didn't understand what that meant. You know, I, I knew it here, intellectually, but I, I didn't know it here in my heart. I would sometimes visit with God when life was doing great, the more often it was when I was hurting and I would send out an SOS but I did not have a relationship with him. I experienced that much of the so-called good life was exciting and desirable, but mostly I discovered it was empty, and it was always going to be empty. Thankfully, God never forsakes us, though it's taken me some time to learn this. He kept putting signs and people in my path looking to connect with me, and by his grace, and I'm sure many a prayer, I've been working on that relationship with him. As a table leader at Alpha, thanks to Pastor Bill, I am learning the importance of fellowship, prayer, and the power of the Holy Spirit. My buddy Ron and I love to see how God works and are absolutely amazed at how many people have touched us through this course. Then there's my other family, the high school youth group. Only God knows how he got me there. It's been a hoot. You know, we laugh, we learn, I get hurt. <laughs> it's been a ride. I pray that each day my kids know how much they mean to me. That no matter how big they get, how old they get, or where they go, they're always going to be with me. God willing, I'll always be there for them if they need me. Right? It's, it's the emotions. <laughs> Probably the biggest area I've been working on is listening prayer. This is something that Daniel's helped me, uh, helped me learn and he's brought to my attention. He's been instrumental in my really growing in this area. So a while back, I started putting out to God, asking him to talk to me. And wouldn't you know it? He did. I realize now that I first heard him while I was at work. One of our leaders was using a sports analogy during his talk. He was sharing how we have a tendency to want to be in the game, but when the coach calls to play, we don't want to listen. We want to run our own play, and it just doesn't work that way. You have to be willing to listen and to trust that the coach has your best interest at heart. Then here at church, we started to talk about lukewarm Christians, and it scared me how close to home that, hurt, or that hit. It made me realize that I keep telling God that I'm his. Just call the play. But I keep saying, wait, let me get back to you on that. If I'm to be a better husband or a friend, be an example to others, then I need to change. God gave us his playbook. The instructions are in there. I just have to listen. That's when I heard the baptism was coming up, and I felt called to finally get baptized. And last Sunday, Daniel was asking the youth group some I wonder questions, you know, like, I wonder what Jesus was thinking as he was nailed to the cross. I wonder why he chose to die for us. The question that come, kept coming up in my mind was, I wonder what he saw in me, that he would suffer for my sins. Because he did. He died for my sins. That I might spend eternity with him. And for me to be the person he wants me to be, then I have to let him lead. I can't do it myself. So right now I'm saying... I will spend time with you in prayer and in your words, studying your plays. Just please, God, in Jesus' name, put me in. <laughs>